نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمن رشدن و عزن من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Verse 65 and 66 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And you had already known about those who transgressed among you concerning the Sabbath And we said to them, be apes despised And we made it a deterrent punishment for those who were present and those who succeeded them and a lesson for those who fear Allah. Now we will be talking about these two verses today. In these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again addressing the people of Bani Israel and Allah is reminding them of an event in their history which they were aware of. As Allah says, وَلَقَدْ alimtum," That surely you know, surely you are aware of the event and the happenings which took place. This is what? This is the story of the people of Sabbath. And I will uh, briefly go through the events to help us understand the whole events and then we will be able to gather the morals and the lessons we learn from the story. The story is basically related to the orders which they were given uh, regarding the specific day of the religious worship. The Jews the, for the Jews, the special day of uh, the religious worship was Saturday, which is called as Sabbath in Quran. And for Christians, the specified day for uh, worship was Sunday. And for the followers of Prophet Wasallam, it is Friday. Now, because we, as we've been seeing in the previous verses also, the people of Bani Israel and the followers of Hazrat Musa salam, they were disobedient and they were stubborn and they were obstinate. And so because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commandments and the orders given to them were also more strict and they were more difficult. Regarding the day of worship, the people of Bani Israel and the followers of Hazrat Musa salam, they were ordered that they were not supposed to do any worldly affair on the day of Sabbath. That is, that they would have to refrain from all forms of worldly activities to the extent that they were not even allowed to light fire or cook their food. As compared to that, if we realize the orders for the followers of Muhammad وسلم, for all of us regarding Friday are very, very light and they are very easy as compared to the people of Bani Israel. For example, the orders of uh, Juma they are explained in Surah Juma in Quran where Allah says that, O oh, believers, when the call for prayers is made on Friday, hasten to the remembrance of Allah and give up all forms of trading. That is better for you if you only knew. And in the next verse, Allah says, But when the prayer is ended, disperse in the land and seek Allah's bounty and remember Allah much so that you may prosper. So if 
we gather from here, we see that the orders for all of us on Friday are just from when? From after the Azan till the Muslims, they do what? <coughs> they listen to the Friday sermon and they offer the congregational salah and that is all. And the reward which has been promised is immense. As we learn from the words of Prophet Sallallahu that whoever takes a bath and purifies himself as much as he can and then he wears clean and neat clothes and for men they do what? They wear a perfume as well and then they go to the mosque and they do not force apart people and sit in between them and they sit silently and they attentively listen to the Friday sermon and then they offer the two records of the congregational salah. Then the sins from the previous Friday to this Friday will be forgiven. Subhanallah! How immense, how immense reward has been promised to all of us for such limited period of worship as compared to the people of Bani Israel. But before I proceed with the discussion of uh, the people of Sabbath, I would want to highlight that the orders of Friday for the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu are obligatory. And there are so many, so many narrations of Prophet Sallallahu in which he has clearly explained the punishment of the people who leave the Friday congregational salah without any any actual excuse. I would want to narrate a few narrations of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu has reported in Musnad Ahmad and Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I feel I should ask somebody to stand in my place to lead the prayer. This is what Prophet said about the Friday congregational salah. I feel that I should ask somebody to stand in my place to lead the salah and I myself should go and set fire to the houses of the people who do not come for the Friday prayer. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he has reported in Musnad Ahmad in Muslim and Nasai that Prophet said that people should refrain from giving up the Friday prayers. Otherwise, Allah will seal up their hearts and they will become totally heedless. And similarly, has a Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abdullah bin uh, Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they have reported that Prophet sallallahu has said that Allah seals up the heart of the person who abandons three Friday prayers one after the other. That is consecutive three Friday prayers he leaves without a genuine excuse or a reason and a lawful excuse. Rather, in one tradition, Prophet said, Allah turns the heart of such a person into the heart of a hypocrite. Allahumma tawakhir qalbi min nifaqi And this is reported in Musnad Ahmad and Abu Dawood, Nisai, Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah. All the books of Hadith. Similarly, Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala and who he reports, <coughs> he reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet said, from today, Till the day of resurrection, Friday prayer is obligatory on you. And Allah will neither bless nor set right the condition of one who abandons it, disregarding it or considering it as an ordinary thing. Note it well, the prayer of such one will not be a prayer at all. His zakat will not be a zakat at all. His hajj will be no hajj. His fasting will be no fasting. And no good deed done will him will be accepted until he repents. And then for the one who repents, Allah is most forgiving. Allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatakhirin astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk 
Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr ibn Ulas has reported in Abu Dawood that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said the Friday prayer is obligatory on every person who hears the call to it. And Hazrat Hafsa رضي الله تعالى عنها she reports in a side that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said attendance the Friday prayer is obligatory on every adult male. And similarly, it is also reported that the Prophet ﷺ said that the congregational prayer of Friday is obligatory on every Muslim except the slave because obviously he is dependent on the rules and the orders and the commands of his master. On every Muslim except slave, women, children and the sick. And this, is, this has been reported in Abu Dawud. And Prophet Sallallahu has also been reported to say that Friday prayer is obligatory on the person who believes in Allah and the last day. Unless it is a woman, it is a traveler or a slave or a sick man. So this is the importance of the Friday prayers and the obligatory, how obligatory it is and how important it is to maintain it. And what is the punishment of the people who leave it without any genuine and any lawful excuse? But now, starting again, coming back to the whole event, for Jews, they were ordered to stay away from all worldly activities throughout the day. And the orders were very difficult for them. Now, here is the story of the people of the Sabbath. Because, you know, Quran has rebuked the people of Bani Israel for the heinous acts. And Allah has challenged them here to mention the story of people of Sabbath in, in uh, which some of the people of uh, this locality, they were transformed and changed into monkeys and pigs. The story relates to a small fishing community. They were fishermen and fishing was their profession and it was their source of income and it was their sole source of livelihood. So it was a small fishing community and um, it was located between Madian and the Mount Thur and the, they were the people of Ayla and it was in the period of Hazrat Dawood now, during this time, because of their persistent disobedience and their stubbornness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed many injunctions against them. And as a punishment for their rebellious behavior, but um, not only as a punishment, but also as a means of cleansing them against their sins. Much of these injunctions and rules were therefore a trial for the people of Bani Israel. So one of these injunctions was the observance of Sabbath, that is Saturday, where, as I've already told, that the people of Bani Israel were completely prohibited from doing any worldly work. So in one of these villages, they were located on the Red Sea, and the Jews, they used to work fishing, and uh, it meant what? According to this order of the Sabbath, it meant obviously that they were not allowed to fish on Saturdays. Now, this injunction was particularly difficult for them to comply with. Because you know what happened was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the seas in which they fished, they proved to be poor fishing ground for six days of the week. But you know what happened? On every Saturday, all types of fish would appear in the same sea. And on Saturdays, they were so, so very abundant. And they were so prominent that they could even be seen playing on the surface of the water. On all the other days, the same fish would just vanish. And the fishermen would come back empty-handed. Now, the appearance of this plentiful fish on Saturdays and the disappearance on the rest of the days, this was a trial from Allah to test their faith, to test their obedience and the patience. Now, slowly and steadily what started happening was that these people, these fishermen, they started getting frustrated. And they could just not tolerate the observance of Sabbath any longer. But at the same time, 
they they did not even want to outrightly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore you know what they did they devised a scheme they they invented and they devised a scheme to circumvent to circumvent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders what they used to do was that they used to dig deep holes and then they would lay out their fishing traps on friday in these holes and when the fish they visited on saturdays they were caught in the traps they were busy worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were wishing they were busy praying but at the same time on saturday their fish were caught in the traps on sunday the fishermen would collect the fish in doing so what did they do they deliberately disobeyed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indirectly because even if technically they did not fish on saturday the fish in fact were caught because of the system they had improvised and this was their trickery and this was their deception they very well understood that they were breaching the observance of something substance as time passed they became more and more daring they become more and more daring and they started disobeying the commands of Allah openly now now in actual fact what was the whole event it was a trial it was a trial and the trial was to cleanse them for their sins and disobedience but they were like just unable to withstand this trial Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the events in other other chapters of Quran as well where Allah says chapter 7 verse 163 Allah says inquire of them O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the town which was situated by the sea when they did not keep the sabbath the fish came up on the surface of the water for them but on the days other than the sabbath the fish did not come we tried them in this way for they were disobedient and then Allah says when a section of them said why do you admonish a people whom God is about to destroy or to punish severely they replied to clear ourselves of blame before our Lord and that they may fear the God but when they forgot to remember the warning we save those who prohibited evil but inflicted on the wicked a dreadful punishment a requital for their disobedience so what happened actually was that <coughs> <coughs> when the disobedient people they became more and more daring and they started disobeying the commands openly and they would catch the fish on sunday the rest of the villagers who did not participate in this sinful act actually they got divided into two groups the first who actively disapproved of the actions and they were also warning the wrong doers to rectify their mannerism before the punishment of the torment of the Allah fell upon them and the second group of people they were the they were the silent spectators and they remained silent in the face of all the wrong doings they were seeing they did nothing to stop the wrong doers they allowed the disobedience to continue even though they did not actively pass, participate themselves in the wrong doing and you know what else they did they also disapproved of the first group that is the group who was trying to stop the wrong tours the second group was trying to disapprove they disapproved of the people who were stopping them to do this wrong doing and they used to ask them why why do you preach to the people who allah is about to destroy us to punishment with severe torment so in today's term why what 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 they trying to say why are you bothered about them to hell with them let the issue be between the there and their allah so they were the silent spectators now the first group they were aware that if they did not actually try to stop the wrongs 
that were being openly committed, then the torture and the punishment of Allah would descend upon the whole community and not just the wrongdoers. And they would not provide them with adequate defense against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened is that week after week, the disobedient fishermen continued to defy Allah's orders, bringing with them abundant fish from the sea. Fearing the torture of Allah, the first group continued, continued to warn them against the action and repeatedly, repeatedly, despite the multitude of warnings the disobedient people they continue to transgress and exceed the limits of Allah so what happened finally was that the curse and the wrath of Allah fell upon the community and the ones who were commanding the right and prohibiting the wrong they were spared from the torment and how were the rest of the community even the passive bystanders the silent spectators they were severely punished and this punishment was unique it was unprecedented and not only was it unique and unprecedented it was terrifying and it was humiliating as Allah says when they persisted in doing what they were they had been forbidden what was said we said to them, become like apes, the despised ones. And the events have been explained by the words of Prophet also. Hazrat Ibn Abbas and Malik, they have reported that Prophet told that those who committed the sinful deeds, they were abandoned by the rest of the people of the town. And some of them declared their rejection and denial and they did not listen to the preachers and afterward they used to stay night apart from the rest of the people of the town and um, there were doors barriers between them and the rest of the people who were anticipating that there will be a befalling of punishment over them in one day and one day the the doors were not opened and they did not come and the doors did not open till noon. And the people got anxious. The rest of the people, they got anxious. And they, they sent one of them to see what happened to them. And when they came from above the doors, they saw that there were monkeys. And there were no people. They were just monkeys. And the monkeys, you know what? They, they recognized their relatives. While their relatives could not recognize them. And they howled and they shouted and they shrieked and they screamed and they cried. Because they had human minds and they had bodies like monkeys. And the monkeys made a sign with their heads. The people who were stopping them, they, they, they asked them, Did we not forbid you from doing this? And the monkeys made signs with their heads and they said yes. And then Abdullah bin Abbas, anhu, he wept and he said, that we, we all see many wrongdoings and we do not reject them or deny them or even make a comment. So, this is what happened with these people, Kunu Kiradat and Hasa'in. And similarly, Hazrat Ibn Abbas, who is also narrated, that the young men of the town were turned into monkeys and the old men were turned into pigs. And Hazrat Ibn Abbas also narrates that they did not live long and they also left no offsprings and no monster lived more than three days and uh, in addition they could not eat they could not drink and they did not have any remnants behind and this is what is mentioned more than one chapters of Quran so what morals and what lessons do we learn from here or what message does this event and these two verses give us? Number one, the whole event explains to us the importance of obedience of Allah. And then the whole events and both the verses explain and highlight to us the punishment, how grievous the punishment of disobedience of Allah is. 
and the verses also highlight that disobedience to Allah or disobedience to the commandments of Allah is disobedience whether it is direct or whether it is indirect a group of people whether they are directly openly aggressively disobeying Allah or they are they are silently or secretly or indirectly disobeying Allah disobedience is still disobedience and it might be punished and similarly from here we also realize the importance of the specified day of worship as for us the day of Friday and last but not the least from the whole of the event and from these two verses we learn the importance of inviting to goodness and stopping from the evil deeds and uh, this action that is inviting towards goodness and stopping from the evil deeds has been frequently called in Quran as Amar Bil Maruf and Nahi Anil Munkar. So what do we mean by that? Amar Bil Maruf wa Nahi Anil Munkar. It is a popular Quranic phrase and it means enjoining Maruf and forbidding the Munkar. Maruf means what? Maruf means anything which is good, which is known, which is well known, which is generally accepted, which is generally recognized, which is beneficial, which is approved by Sharia. And what is good and what is approved by Sharia is all that is halal and that is lawful. And Munkar means what? So by that means, Maruf, Amar Bil Maru will mean what? Enjoining all that is good, enjoining all which is beneficial and which is approved by Sharia. That is what we mean by Amar Bil Maruf. And what do we mean by Munkar? Munkar is what it is? Exactly opposite to Maruf. So Munkar means bad anything which is bad, which is evil, which is detestable, which is disagreeable, which is disapproved. So Nahi Anil Munkir would mean what? Forbidding the evil, forbidding the evil, the detestable, disagreeable and disapproved deeds. What is disapproved? All forms of haram and all forms of things which are prohibited in Islam, stopping from that is Nahyan al Munkar. As Allah says in Quran in Surah Al Imran, Allah says, Waltakum minkum ummatui, yadauna ilal khair, yakmuruna bil marufi, wa yan hauna anil munkar. Allah says, And let there arise out of you a group of people who invite to goodness and enjoin what is right and forbid what is evil they are the ones to attain felicity similarly in verse 110 of surah al imran allah says kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrajat lin nas ta'muruna bil marufi wa tanhauna anil munkar you are the best group of people you are the best group of people evolved for mankind and you do what? Enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong. And believing in Allah. If only the people of the book had faith, it were best for them. Among them are some who have faith, but most of them are transgressors. So people having faith are supposed to do what? Do Amr bil Maruf and Nahi anil Munkar. And people who do not carry on Amr bil Maruf and Nahi al Munkar, they are transgressors, they are disobedience, and they are not the followers, and they are not the believers. Prophet has also, in so many narrations, explained the importance of Amr bil Maruf and Nahi al Munkar. As 
he has been reported to say that there should always be a group of people calling towards good and forbidding them towards evil and this is obligatory upon the ummah remember this is an obligatory duty of all the people of the ummah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam enjoining good and forbidding evil is a principal characteristic of a muslim a believer in islam may it be a male may it be a female should not only possess this characteristic but also mutually cooperate in the promotion of good and prohibition of evil there is no gender biased concept in islam as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah tauba verse 71 the believing men and the believing women they're all allies of one another they enjoin what is right and they forbid what is wrong and they establish prayer and they give zakat and they obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger those allah will have mercy upon indeed allah is exalted in might and wise so allah the wise and allah the might has ordered us all what allah says that all those whether men or women if they are believers they should do what they should indulge in amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkar and that is one behavior and that is one activity which will help allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to be showered on them and similarly in verse 67 of surah tauba allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the hypocrite men and the hypocrite women in al munafiqin aw al munafiqat they are what they are of one another they do what they enjoin what is wrong and they forbid what is right and they close their hands they have forgotten allah so he has forgotten them indeed the hypocrites it is they who are defiantly disobedient so the hypocrites the disobedients those who will be punished severely and those who are cursed are the group of people who do not carry on amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkar and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has ordered us that whoever amongst you sees an eel he must change it with his hand and if he is unable to do so that is that is he is unable to do so with his hand then with his tongue and if he is unable to do so that is he can't even change with his tongue then with his heart and that is the weakest form of faith so you know in this hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned all of us all the muslims the response to to whenever they experience or they observe an evil happening is to do what that if they are capable to stop with hand they can use their power they can use their influence they can use their status their force to stop the bad things then they should do that but if a believer is not capable of that that the person is not so influential or not so powerful and does not have a status and position and cannot stop by his hand is incapable of stopping the evil with the hand then at least at least speak out against it use your tongue and speak out against it but then if the person is incapable of speaking out also and the per- person is so weak then even if that is not possible then at least the person should detest that evil deed in his heart telling himself or herself that such evil thing which is happening in front of his or her eyes and the person is not able to do anything to stop it the person should at least feel bad at heart the person should feel bad at heart and this is the weakest form of faith those who do not even have this they will not even have the weakest form of faith that is those who are not even bothered about the evil happening and they do not even dislike in their hearts 
they do not have faith in the true sense. So, the summer bil maruf and nahi anil munkar, it is a collective responsibility of the Muslim ummah. And as Prophet sallallahu has been reported by Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet sallallahu said, when people see an oppressor but do not prevent him from doing evil, it is likely that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them all. You see, like the people of Sabbath, they were all punished. So if people in a community, in a locality, in a society, they stop, they stop asking the wrongdoers and the evildoers to stop it, and they stop talking or working against the evil deeds, then there will be a torment of Allah which will be common to all. And similarly, Prophet ﷺ has been reported to say that by him in whose hands my life is, you either enjoy good and forbid evil or Allah will certainly soon send his punishment to you. And then you will make supplications and it will not be accepted. So this is what is the punishment of localities, communities, societies, families, groups of people who see the evil, who see the wrongdoings, who see the transgressions of Allah, who see people disobeying the commandments of Allah openly and they do not stand up. They do not stop and they do not try to stop. It has been reported in Bukhari that Prophet ﷺ narrated that you are on board. That he reported the condition of people who were on board. And he explained the situation of people, the likeness the likeness of a man who observes the limits prescribed by Allah and of that man who transgresses them is like the people who got on board. They got on board on a ship after casting lots. And because of the lots, some of them, they were in the lower deck and because of the lots, some of them, they, they, were, in the, they were to occupy the upper deck. So those who were in the lower deck of the ship, they when they whenever they required water, they had to go to the upper deck. And because of that, the occupants of the upper deck, they would get annoyed and they would just like uh, get angry with them. And so, you know, the people of the lower deck, they decided what? They said that if we make a hole, hole in the bottom of the ship, you know what? The people of the upper deck, they used to get angry with them. That you keep on coming upstairs and you keep on disturbing us. So upset with all this, the people of the lower deck, who definitely did need water, they decided that they would make a hole in the bottom of the ship. And Prophet ﷺ said that if the occupants of the upper and the lower deck, they left them to carry out their design, then they would all be drowned. But if they do not let them go ahead, all of them would remain safe. So if a group of people in the society is doing evil deeds and doing wrong deeds and committing sins, if the rest of the society doesn't stop them, then the whole of the community will be, will be drowned in these sinful activities. Now here, I would want to highlight one thing that, you know, most of the Muslims, they think that Amr bil maruf and Nahi anil munkar, that is enjoining goodness and stopping from evil deeds. This is just and just the responsibility of the teachers of Quran and the preachers of Quran. And the general community of Muslims is just expected and needed to offer salah, to fast, to perform hajj. And that is all what is the duty of a Muslim. Now, believe you me, this is not like that. 
this is a duty of all the muslims of a community and a society because this is what this is actually the cleaning of the society and how how very important cleaning and purification is if we just note around and look around ourselves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the system of cleaning in the earth and the universe you must have observed an animal dies and the dead body of the animal is immediately removed by insects by scavengers and this is to do what this is to keep the earth clean otherwise if this would all not happen and the scavengers and the insects they would all not do this then there would be filth and there would be smell on all the ground and all the earth rain rain is what it is a cleaning method it cleans up the atmosphere it cleans up the land it cleans up the vegetation if you look in our bodies in our systems the eye when there is a dust storm and dust enters in our eyes what happens there is there is a lacrimal gland above the eyes in the bony orbit there is a lacrimal gland and immediately when there is some dust or something irritating in the eye that lacrimal gland it starts pouring the lacrimal secretions the water works the tears and these tears they flow when they wash off the eye and clean it a foreign body gets in the nose immediately the person sneezes the air gushes out and the nose is clean something in the throat the person coughs and the throat is clean there is a cut in the skin immediately the blood flows it washes and then the antibodies the cells in the blood they fight the germs and they provide immunity and they keep the wounds sterile and clean and then we are all ladies we are housewives we know our houses our kitchens how frequently do we need to clean them how frequently do we need to clean our kitchens and how meticulously do we need to clean our kitchens so this amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkar is what it is an action and it is a step to clean the society to keep the society or the community clean and pure from sins from evil deeds from transgressions from disobedience and i would end my discussion <coughs> narrating the story of or explaining the events as narrated by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there was a community of bani israel and it was a disobedient locality and the people there were transgressing and they were disobeying and they were sinful but in the same locality there was a person who was very very pious he was very pious he was a believer and he used to worship and he used to stand all night in the supererogatory prayers offering salah but the whole community was indulging in sins seeing this sinning and sinful locality allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels to to send his torment and to wipe off the locality the angels came and they saw the locality and they also observed that pious person and they went back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they asked that you are you have asked us to destroy this city but you know what allah there is a very pious person who worships who stands for your worship throughout the night what do we do with him you know what allah said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered he ordered the angel to start start the torment and start the destructive punishment from the very house of that person who worships who worships all night why why because he just thought that to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he needed supererogatory he needed supererogatory prayers but all around him all around in the community people were indulging 
in sins, in disobedience and they were transgressing. But he would stay preoccupied in his own world. He didn't even stop them with his hand. He did not even comment anything with his tongue. And he didn't even feel bad in his heart. So the punishment would start from the house of that person. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us realize the importance of stopping evil and sins around us and help us stop it with our hands, with our tongues and help us help us reject it and dislike it in our hearts. Rabbana la tuzi' qulubana ba'da iz khadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin